He is awesome. God deserves the honor. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise and honor and glory. You guys may be seated. I have to give honor to Pastor and his family. I mean, he's an example if I've ever seen one myself. And the Bembrys, they're awesome. They, are, they, try, they strive to be examples. And I'm so grateful that we have leadership in our life that wants to be in the, the direct will of God. Amen. Opening in uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. When you get there, say amen. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth, Unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Understanding, church, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the world of this darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan will try to use both people in the world and in the church to intimidate us, to bind us up, to make us feel condemned to where we are not fulfilling the duties and not walking in the calling and the purpose that God has given us. We try to live for God normally, and we decide to get a little passionate, and then the enemy says, well, hold on, you're being too spiritual. And then you're doing too much, and you're, you're trying to throw your walk in other people's faces. And we start to believe this. So we're not giving like we should, and we're not praying like we should, and we're not witnessing the gospel of Jesus Christ like we should, and we're not worshiping like we should, and we're not serving like we should. And we see the same people who are chosen over and over again. They're chosen for everything that goes on, and then the leadership is made to look out like they're facilitating cliques or they're playing favorites. But in fact, it's because we have deceived, we've been deceived into believing that we're not righteous enough and we're not holy enough for God to use us, and we end up hiding our light under a bushel instead of letting it shine for all men to see. I have found that the the best way To overcome this mentality is to do the most, to go above and beyond, to be as on fire for God as you absolutely can in these last days. They say, oh, brother and sister so-and-so, they're giving, but they have an ulterior motive. That's okay. Be the best giver you can be. Continue to give. They say a person is, when they're serving, they just want to be seen and just be promoted. Don't let that hold you back. You continue to serve every man of God that he puts into your life. They say this person is just worshiping, just to look spiritual. Well, you haven't seen anything yet. Stick around for a little longer. I'm going to be bouncing off the walls. Come on. Think of all the words and all the attacks as pieces of wood. And when they're thrown at you, catch it right into your furnace and burn uh, as hot as you can. And be as on fire for God as you can be. Don't let anybody douse your fire. Don't let anybody marginalize your influence. Don't anybody minimalize your impact. This is who we are. We are children of God. This is what we do. We serve God as hard as we can, saving nothing, withholding nothing. We don't hold back. That's not, that's not who we are. I like Moses so much. He's, in a, he's a wonderful example. He went to Mount Sinai. He was, he was communing and fellowshipping with God, and he saw the hinder parts of God, and his glory was so bright that when he came off of the mountain, I mean, his face shined so bright, it was blinding people. And, he, and the people, they, they, had, they suggested, you know, put a veil over your face because, I mean, let alone hear you, we can't even see you. But I'm telling you, When you have that mountaintop experience with God and you've come from off of the mountain in the power of the Spirit, whether to preach the acceptable year of the Lord or whatever God has called you to do, don't put a veil on your face. Uncover it and let everybody see your light. Let everybody see the glory of God 
that is shining and emanating off of you, don't hide it. Don't hide it. I like that song. It says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Don't hold back. And you know, you say, Brother Pavan, you know, you're, you're just coming on too strong. You're just doing too much. You're just hooping and you're just hollering. Here's why. You know, I'm, I'm not knocking preaching. We need preaching. It's what God chose to save them that believe. But me personally, I would rather be an effective reacher than just a good preacher. If you could bring up Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, please. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. I think an appropriate substitution for the word preached in this verse is the word reach. So let's reread it with the substitution. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be reached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. I stand here to tell you guys, no, we're not all preachers. No, we're not all called to be bishops, and no, we're not all called to be in the fivefold ministry. But surely we can be reachers. But surely we can reach the lost. But surely we can do everything in our power to reach towards God with all of our mind and our body and our spirit and not be called legalistic. No, we're not legalistic. We have balance. Yes, we do. But there's nothing wrong with wanting to seek God as hard and be as close to God as you want to be. You'll never go wrong trying to be as close to God as you can. In Jesus' name, be on fire, church. And I hope you guys take this with you. I hope you guys are touched and this is applicable. In Jesus' name.